As most of you know by now, if not earlier, uh, the theme of this year's Davos is the shifting power equation, and the title of this session is Who Shapes the Agenda? You know, who takes the lead in shaping an agenda when the individual is increasingly being empowered by technology? Power seems to be going from the core to the periphery. And when we talk about shaping the agenda, we want to talk about business, media, politics, uh, domestic, foreign, emerging markets, all of that. We have as good a panel as you can get to talk about that. And let me uh, go from right to left. Lloyd Blankfin is chairman and CEO of Goldman Sachs. I think you know all of them. Uh, Gordon Brown is chancellor of the Exchequer of the United Kingdom. C.P. Livni is the Vice Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs of Israel. Jack Mayun is founder and chief executive officer of Alibaba.com. And Rupert Murdoch is chairman and CEO of News Corp. Let me start by, um, and first of all, uh, I don't want to really dra direct traffic here. It's very, as much as I'd like for them just to play off of what others say. Uh, we are op operating, if you like, in the slow, slow lane of a super information uh, highway, uh, and we are not yet able to respond to what is that explosive power. I, I think it was Shelley who said uh, that politicians had lost the art of communication, but not, alas, the gift of speech. And I think, I, I think, I think there, is, there is a danger that we have not caught up. So I would say we have got to be conscious that you cannot make political decisions now without people being involved in the decisions. And I think our failure to deal with trade, globalization, uh, winning the battle of hearts and minds in relation to arcade is all a reflection of that. You've got to involve people in the decisions, and I think you've got to be upfront, open, and have big national debates and sometimes global debates on the big issues of our time if you're going to actually both involve people in the decisions and get the right decisions. So I think it's going to change, but it hasn't yet changed yet for politics. These people who are blogging and who are on the Internet, for the most part, uh, are what we might call the Internet generation, people under 35 or under 40. They tend to be more idealistic. Uh, they express themselves more strongly. Um, we shouldn't be terrorized by it. But really, we are seeing an explosion uh, of freedom of expression. Um, and uh, you know, we have to take note of it. I think it is making a very great change. And we're seeing it even in business. Uh, Gordon mentioned the climate uh, debate. Uh, I know when, as a company, uh, we went around and said we want to become uh, carbon neutral. The, I was amazed at the enthusiasm of all our employees. They were well aware of the issue uh, and all wanted to join in. Um, I didn't know that feeling was there at all. But that is an effect of something from the internet. At the end of the day, regulated entities like ourselves, and to some extent everyone's regulated either officially or through the press, by the public through the press, um, and you know, there's, there's a price to pay for our, uh, our privileged position. In the emerging worlds, it's very, very dramatic. You had formerly command economies now believing that the best decision-making is going to be made by the markets and going headlong into developing those market mechanisms, taking their companies public, attracting outside capital, and most importantly, having the decisions for how those, that capital is allocated being made by a market such that 10,000 decisions could be made in a day instead of one decision being made at a time uh, by an official sector in a command situation. So it's very, very dramatic uh, changes. When I doing business in China, especially on a, such a sensitive area called the Internet, and everybody think about China Internet is about a censorship, but to me, it's not that, that serious. Because 15 years ago, when we do chi Internet in China, and, and China government was saying, no, no, no Internet, it's so dangerous. But I thought Internet is so new to any government. So the way is not to to go against it, just go and educate them and tell them. So as an individual, uh, as a business leader, I always think that, well, doing business is doing business, nothing to do with the government. So I have uh, my philosophy in the past 10 years, in love with the, with the government, but ne never marry them. I come here only to say that the answer to who shapes the agenda is, is not me, it's not the politicians anymore. But uh, the truth is that, especially when it comes to uh, uh, international uh, decision making, it is based on, on images and perceptions. And um, 
Unfortunately, sometimes, uh, especially, for example, during the war in Lebanon, in which I ask for my colleagues to support Israel and to do this and that, and even though they know what reality is and Israel has the right to defend itself and so on, but they answer, like, listen, we have to give answers to the media and we have to give answers to the public opinion and we cannot say what we believe in, but there is something which is the image of Israel, the perceptions, and you have to deal with it. So they send me in a way to handle uh, the situation in the media in order to give them the possibility to do what is right in their eyes. The nature of the change is that people are getting information uh, all the time. As far as uh, the Middle East is concerned, you've got to be conscious of the fact. I think someone wrote that there were 6,000 Al-Qaeda-related websites uh, peddling violence, peddling extremism, uh, trying to uh, uh, shock people one way or another into supporting extreme, extreme violence. And you have therefore got to go out and counteract that. You cannot uh, say uh, we're, we're going to practice uh, secret uh, behind closed doors uh, discussions anymore. You've got to go out and put your view. And the failure of politics at the moment is that we haven't woken up to the fact that with all the citizen power, with all the consumer power, and with all the audience power, you have got to go out and persuade people. I do believe that government is now has to be much more open. But you know, it really hasn't changed the agenda, all that. All governments, reasonable governments, have always tried to improve the lot and to protect uh, their people. Uh, and I think you know, the internet, viewed properly, uh, can be seen as something uh, that is helping that. Uh, I think we should welcome it. Um, there's tremendous pluralism of, uh, of viewpoints. Um, you know, it's not as though there's just one government broadcaster in every country. I mean, even in Afghanistan, there are private television stations now. Uh, I think that we'll just have to let this go, and politicians have to realize uh, that this is happening and that everything is open. I think all the debates today we had and uh, all the debates we had in Davos should be on the Internet in China, let more people know about it. Um, I'm amazed every time I come here, learn, and so I was just looking around. I, th I think I'm full of excitement by learning this, but a lot of Chinese people, they have the rights. They should know it. They, they, because every time I talk, go back to China, talk to people what I've learned at Davos, what I have heard about globalization, corporate citizenship, people look at me like, ah, oh, what are you talking about? But this is exactly the internet that can help. The people that drove us to have a, um, an environmental policy, the people that drove us to participate in this immunization financing that we uh, supported, that uh, Gordon Brown and his government uh, drove, um, are really done because the people of Goldman Sachs, but the people of other firms in financial services and, and in industry broadly, need today to work for institutions and be associated with institutions that stand for something in the world. To be proud of an institution today means to be accomplishing something that's positive for the world and not just that makes money. I believe that governments cannot share the responsibility with, with the private sector because at the end of the day the responsibility is on the government's shoulders. But as long as the companies understand that they have to do something which is more than just business, but to work with, with, with society and work with the people so at the end of the day this can uh, create uh, an atmosphere in which the governments believe that they can give more to the private sector and be less involved in, uh, uh, in, in, uh, in, 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 in these places. What, what we've been discussing this morning, we're responding really uh, to the rising aspirations of people expressed in new ways in multimedia sort of uh, forums uh, and I think the whole of the political and decision-making system has got to be better, better at doing so. Churchill used to say that those who tried to build the present in the image of the past missed out entirely on the challenges of the future. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.